saying, Touch not mine, touch not those whom my anointing has come upon. It didn't say, Touch not my people. Uh -uh. When it has to do with preservation, there is something the presence of the anointing upon their life is a mark and a seal. Was it not a mark upon Cain that was the cause that God gave Cain? God did not flog Cain to curse him. He said, I will put something upon you. And Cain said, this is too much. Because of the mark that is on me, every man who sees me, this mark will make every man who sees me to kill me, reduce my burden. That means there is a mark that can come upon you and can make everything that sees you to leave you in peace. There are times you are pressed, you are running to go and use the restroom and just when you are almost colliding with the door, you see a notice there, out of service. You painfully have to turn back and look for another place. A mark was put there to warn you that no matter how pressed you are, you are being pressed, is no excuse to open this door. Is that true? There are times you want to open a door and you see closed or you want to go to a place, you see a sign closed. The anointing, among the many things it does, is it marks you. There is a statement that the anointing makes on your life that the realm of the spirit understands. One of it, according to this scripture, is touch not. Provided you are not his anointed, that's all right. Do my prophet no harm. Touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed touch not my anointed are we together untimely death touch not my anointed accidents touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm isaiah 10 19 part of the ministry of preservation is to break wicked yokes that are already hanging Isaiah, did I get that right? Look for, look for it for me. Broken because of the anointing. 27, huh? Yes, 1027. I think I confused it with Luke 1019. And it shall come to pass in that day. Somebody said, this is the day. Yeah. That his burden, he never said God's burden. So whoever put that burden has life. His burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck. Satan has burdens and he has yokes. They are not the same, but they do the same thing. It says the yoke shall be destroyed. Not because it has been there for a long time. It didn't say it shall be destroyed because you are tired of having it hanging around your neck and your shoulder. It shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Therefore, as this oil comes upon you this night, I want you to expect and believe that any yoke, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden, hold on, hold on, hold on. I hope you know this idea of yoke and burden did not come from Satan. Yoke and burden just means a responsibility and any constraint. Jesus is saying, in following me and in living for me, you will have these things, but mine is easy and it is light. And Satan said, from that formula, let me invent something. And his burden upon your neck and your shoulder traps you in one place so that any evil thing can come to you, turning you to an animal. But he says, it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Why am I sharing this with you? So that as you make contact with this oil, you don't just think, oh, in church as usual, Pentecostals have come with all these their things. Okay? Mm -mm. You, can, you can do this and from a standpoint of religiosity and it will have no life. You just made yourself oily. And yet the realm of the spirit will not respect it. You just live as an oily version of yourself with everything remaining there that was there before you came. But someone shout, no way. The oil will remain on your face, 
but the fire will enter the realm of the spirit and search for anything that is not of god i assure you by my god who is your god that everything hanging on your neck hanging on your shoulder by this encounter with this anointing it must follow from your destiny